the Russians have now lost 15,000, an estimated 15,000 soldiers. You know, this could be real trouble for Putin because there are going to be 15,000 funerals, 15,000 distraught and understandably angry mothers, 15,000 in about a month. Compare that to the casualties America, the fatalities America sustained in two wars, Iraq and Afghanistan, over nearly 20 years, less than 7,000, less than 7,000. Can Joe Biden fix this situation? I don't think so. He's in Europe talking with NATO, and he's not impressing anybody. And um, I think this was another green light for Russian aggression. Take a look. Would the U.S. or NATO respond with military action if he did use chemical weapons? We would respond. We would respond if he uses it. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. So routine, so proportional nature of the use, our response, chemical weapons, uh, that's not a red line, that's a blurry, yeah, maybe you do, maybe you don't. What is going on? Incredibly strange, and he was incredibly strange before the invasion. Remember this? Russia will be held accountable if it invades, and it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, et cetera. It depends, a big invasion or a teeny invasion, it depends, it all depends, and maybe we'll respond. It'll be, you know, in kind. Very strange performance, uh, beginning, during, after the press conference. Thank you very, very much. Whoa, 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 you know, yeah, one final question, right. Hey, look, wait, hold on a second, please. I was supposed to be an hour ago at the European Union meeting and to speak. No, no I'm thanking you. Uh, so, so someone I haven't called on before. You. Who are you? You. Hey, if you can't keep your schedule, it's not the reporter's fault, by the way. Anyway, what happened next was something else. Sir, deterrence didn't work. What makes you think Vladimir Putin will alter course based on the action you've taken today? Let's get something straight. You remember, if you covered me from the very beginning, I did not say that, in fact, the sanctions would deter him. Sanctions never deter. You keep talking about that. Sanctions never deter. The maintenance of sanctions the maintenance of sanctions, the increasing the pain, and the demonstration why I asked for this NATO meeting today is to be sure that after a month, we will sustain what we're doing, not just next month, the following month, but for the remainder of this entire year. That's what will stop him. Do you believe the actions today will have an impact on making Russia change course in Ukraine? That's not what I said. You, you're, you're playing a game with me. I know. The answer is no. Sanctions never Deter, excuse me, sanctions never deter. Now we could show you the reams of uh, sound bites of his officials saying they do deter, and that was the focus, deterrence. But I'm actually gonna delegate that to the not so fake news for a change, Major Garrett at CBS, right after this press conference, he did it. It's CBS correspondent Christina Ruffini getting that last question into President Biden. History will record that before this invasion of Ukraine began, several administration officials representing the President of the United States, Joseph Biden, said, in fact, sanctions might deter that invasion. The President just said, again, emphatically, they don't deter. What they do is they sustain pressure over time, hoping to achieve a different result. <laughs> he was emphatically wrong, President Biden was. And now we get to the lies. Somebody asked him about 2024, hand-picked question about, ooh, what if President Trump comes back? Europe doesn't want that. Listen to how he handled it. I had no intention of running for president again. And uh, until I saw those folks coming out of the fields in Virginia carrying torches and carrying Nazi banners and literally singing the same vile rhyme that they used in Germany in, in the early 20s, or 30s, I should say. And, um, and then when 
The gentleman you mentioned was asked what he thought, and a young woman was killed, a protester. And he asked, was asked what he thought. Uh, he said, there are very good people on both sides. And that's when I decided I wasn't going to be quiet any longer. Now, the fake news doesn't like to point out this lie, but it is the great big lie. The Charlottesville hoax. Here's what President Trump said that day. You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. It's the, one of the biggest lies ever told, and they keep telling it. Joe Biden, at this point, maybe he even believes it. This was the centerpiece of his campaign. When he made that silly video, uh, why he's running, it was because Donald Trump said very fine people on both sides, saying that neo-Nazis and white supremacists are very fine people. He explicitly said the opposite, the very opposite. He doesn't seem to have much respect uh, for Americans, for Europeans, for anybody but himself and his family. Um, oh, here's a little bragging. He says, Europeans, they're on his side. The first G7 meeting I attended, like the one I did today, was in Great Britain. And I sat down and I said, America's back. And one of, the, one, one of my counterparts, colleagues, as head of state, said, for how long? For how long? All right, he's told this nonsense story a million times. Sometimes it's one person, sometimes it's 50 people. Sometimes wherever he goes, he hears for how long, for how long. If it is, if there's a kernel of truth there, and I doubt it, they want <laughs> you to stick around because the other guy, they couldn't get anything by him. Donald Trump, remember, he sat in the middle. He, he was just, he beat those people, all right, on big deals and small. That's why they like you, a total pushover. And Joe, let's face it, you're not very impressive around these European people, here at home or the European leaders. You mentioned the G8 summit that you said you were such a hit at. Here's what really happened. And, uh, and we, I've said before, and I apologize for repeat. Oh, I didn't, I, Jake Sullivan, you know, Jake is my NASA security advisor. I'm leaving out a lot of people here. I apologize, I'm gonna get in trouble. Anyway, we'll get back to that. But um, uh, we, um, uh, you know, there's a lot that uh, that is, is is happening. All right. So <laughs> did you get all that? That's uh, from last year in Cornwall, England. And let's go to the transcript. Gibberish, 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 and more gibberish. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's painful. It's also, I'm sorry, it's a little bit funny. It's also very, very sad. And the fake news on this trip, of course, they try to build him up. They try to protect him. Ever notice how goofy and inappropriate Joe Biden's smile is? It is. But they ignore it. And again, cover for him. Take a look. They're all under enormous pressure. And they're leaning on each other, really, for support, for leadership, for ideas. It's a remarkable moment. It certainly is, uh, and, and we're watching it, Poppy, as we, as we see what's going on. Uh, we see these leaders, they're all, this is a photo opportunity. They're all uh, very, you know, very serious right now. There's a war going on, and a lot of Ukrainians, sadly, are being killed by the Russians. Uh, they're very serious and somber, except the picture we all just saw, Joe Biden grinning and having a great time. Um, you know, when he does smile like that, it makes me think of Donald Trump all the way back in 1980. He talked about politicians and their smiles. He's 34 years old. He's in a national television interview, and they ask him about, do you want to be president someday? Have you ever thought about it? Take a look. Would you like to be the president of the United States? I really don't believe I would, Ronald, but I would like to see somebody as the president who could do the job. I would dedicate my life to this country, but I see it as being a mean life. And I also see it as somebody with strong views and somebody with the kind of views that are maybe a little bit unpopular, which may be right, but may be unpopular, wouldn't necessarily have a chance of getting elected against somebody with no great brain but a big smile. 
No great brain, but a big smile. Sounds like somebody we know, doesn't it? Huh? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> totally. All right. So, hey, what else have I heard a lot about? Not only today, but the past couple of uh, weeks. Red line, red line, a red line. Remember the red line? It's very important that we have a red line established, and we must call it a red line. One of the big questions that we have been asking, of course, is what the red line is for NATO. Of course, you have the threat of the use of chemical weapons, and the president still won't call that a red line. You have a lot of Baltic leaders saying it needs to be a red line. What if Vladimir Putin decides to pursue more extreme options like biological weapons or chemical weapons? Mm -hmm. What about the discussion of what is the red line? The, the NATO... Uh, folks are meeting, discussing red lines, discussing chemical weapons. And that would be a red line, I suspect, for a lot of these NATO allies if the Russians started using chemical or nuclear weapons. Is the term red line really going to make a difference? Obama used the term and blew it off. The media is totally fixated on red line, as if the term, especially Biden, Obama, is that gonna make a difference? Is that going to mean we're going to adhere to anything? No, you don't need the term red line. What you need is a leader. You'll notice in a moment, Donald Trump does not use the term red line, but I think the message to our enemies was pretty darn clear, don't you? North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Mm, but Mr. President, you did not say red line. <sighs> that is leadership. That is deterrence. 